This is Life Transformation Radio. Prepare to engage. Seatbelt activated. activated. Download initiated. Your quantum journey of transformation begins in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Actis, best-selling author of The Law of Action, voice actor, business mindset coach, the podcast whisperer, and Mr. Action himself. Life Transformation Radio is heard in over 90 countries. Thank you for joining us from all around the world. So whether it's your first time joining us or you've been listening to Life Transformation Radio for some time, I want to personally thank you. Here at Life Transformation Radio, we are committed to share more about real life, love, the power of positivity, romance, and of course, laughter. We care about helping others find their internal drive and purpose. We celebrate life's challenges and overcoming them. Please subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast platform. And you can listen to us live like you're doing right now every Monday and Wednesday here on Blog Talk Radio. And a special live on Clubhouse recorded show on Thursday. Also, a personal invitation for me to you. Please join us on Facebook in the Life Transformation Radio community. On the show, my guests are amazing people who are focused and forces for good in the world around them and live a life of transformation. My guest today does just that. Jane M. Powers is an expert in public speaking, training, and coaching, whose accomplishments include decades of successful speaking, training, and coaching, and real-life experience. Founding and running three multi-million dollar businesses, Jane appreciates that success is truly about the power of your core message. Today, Jane and I discuss how she grew beyond the edge of her comfort zone and found her missing piece. Jane M. Powers, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Hello, and thank you, thank you. I cannot appreciate you enough. And man, you have got some titles, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we're already starting off laughing. I love it. So just so you know, Jane is a dear friend of mine. I love Jane so much. Love her wife just a little bit more. Everybody (laughs) does. I'm I'm used to it. Everybody does. I am so (laughs) thrilled to have you here today. You know, you normally we'd be talking about speaking and sharing your core message and entrepreneurship. But today on Life Transformation Radio, we really want to dive a little bit deeper and we want to talk about transformation in your life. And you've had a lot of transformation. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I will say yes to that. I don't even need to call a lifeline. I do know the answer is a solid yes to that. And it's interesting, Rob, You know, this is, I know this is our first experience on the radio, you and I together. Um, This is actually my first experience sharing Beyond My Edge, um, gosh, for many, many years. I used to speak on transformation years ago and really got more into the speaking and sales end of things. So it's really, this is near and dear to my heart because I don't know if you even know this, Rob. The reason I started my speaking and sales training business, my coaching business, was because nobody else was raising their hand when I wanted to do a workshop on revealing your missing piece. And again, for the listeners, it's P-E-A-C-E, so revealing your missing piece after trauma or an experience. But no one was raising their hand to say, yeah, that was me. And I thought, okay, why do I want to do work with survivors of trauma, mostly my my specialty because of my experience is sexual abuse, and nobody was raising their hand because of the shame, the blame, the guilt, and, and the stigma that went with that. And I thought, okay, I, I want to work with individuals to help them find their voice. I'm a professional speaker. Bing, the light bulb went on, and I'm like, I found my voice through speaking, and, and truly that was the transformation that I wanted to bring to the world. So 
when I do speak of my business, it truly is speaking of the true work that I'm here to do. Well, thank you for being here, and thank you for being in a position of being vulnerable, of, of doing that deep dive. And, and I have to say that I'm truly humbled that you decided to, in essence, come out with this story here on Life Transformation Radio. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. like how I did that? you like how I did that? <laughs> okay. I, many times. I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's old hat. I specialize in coming hat. out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, I love you. I love you. You're so great. So (laughs) tell us a little bit about, you know, what happened and how you have gotten through it and how you have thrived and survived and not just survived and and that you're not a victim. You know, you had you had some really challenging of anybody that I know. And I say this about me as well. And yours probably more amplified is that. If anybody could be a failure in life and be an alcoholic and a drug addict and someone who's just, you know, not living a very great existence, it would be Jane M. Powers because you have the perfect excuse to live a life like that. Yeah. And, and, you've and you know, not it's interesting. To. Yeah. And I don't know if it was a choice. I, I, obviously, it was a choice. We all get to choose. But I sometimes wonder, is fear a greater motivator than the power of decision. So uh, just to give you a little background, and it's interesting because I have purposely, like on purpose, I really, uh, I put my life into almost one sentence. And I have done that for many, many years within my speaking business. Because quite frankly, people don't want to, they want to know the story, but they really don't want to know your story. They want to tell their story. So many times from stage in my business, I basically say, you know, I grew up in a complicated family. And I let other people fill in the blanks because they have their complicated family story. I have mine. And I have found this, and, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my story, but I have found this that I don't know, I, I, I feel that there is a survivor competition many times. Because I would share my story, and be like, well, yeah, this happened, and they'd be like, wow, well, you want to know what happened to me? And I believe that is our, uh, uh, the cry for greater val- you know, validation and greater confirmation of our reality as we grew up. So I have truly, Rob, I've downplayed a lot of my story. I say, oh, I'm one in three, and people are like, well, what does that mean? But if they've been sexually abused, they know one in three women by the age of 18 will have experienced a certain degree of sexual abuse, one in four boys. And pull their, they go, oh, yeah, I know who she is, or I know what she's lived through. So much of what I tell about my story has truly been put into a couple of sentences so that it, it allows people to, for me to validate their story. So that, I feel, is my role because it is so important to be validated. If you have been through trauma, if you have been through abuse, if you have been through anything that created in you a trigger, then you get you get to be validated. So, um, so what would you like to hear about my life? I am an open book. Obviously, my book is coming out May twenty sixth. That will not only share all, <laughs> but <laughs> there. I don't have. I wish I had secrets. I try to find some, but I, I just don't have any. Um, What I do in my book, there's going to be, I was a journaler in the sense that I would draw rather than write. So, you know, many people will journal and be like, Dad, I hate your guts. I drew most of my journaling through my healing process, and those actually will be included in my book. Uh, Some a bit graphic, some very expressive to what most people will relate to. Um, Right. But so let me, so... I, I grew up youngest of seven. I had um, three brothers and three sisters. So the oldest were the three boys were the oldest, and then came the three girls, and then came um, me to, to bring up the caboose or whatever you want to say. Um, you know, we had an interesting family. We were the poorest people in the in the country club. 
and I don't mean physic, you know, materialistically poor. We were emotionally broke. Uh, we were emotionally broke and broken. And it basically, I can sum it up. I had a therapist one time after I finally began having memories of, so my history, I have um, numerous perpetrators of sexual abuse in my family, um, not only my immediate family. My dad was the primary perpetrator along with um, other siblings and grandfathers, uncles, brother-in-laws, um, a little bit of everybody. It was We were a magnet with no limits and boundaries and um there was it was really fair game within our in our family unit and i well i i, re- I just want to say i'm first of all i'm sorry that you went through that and i just want to acknowledge because i know who you are and you are so incredible and so loving and Thank so you. giving and so brilliant and i love that you know you have broke the karmic cycle. And um, I just, you know, and, and I, and I think that it's important for people to hear. I think people pass that up. One out of three women are victims of some type of sexual assault and have sexual trauma. So if you mm-hmm. look into a room of a hundred people, 30 people, 30 women have been victims of sexual assault. And men, it's one out of four. And I'm a victim of being molested when I was a kid. So I'm one of those yeah. four. So that's yeah. mothers, and daughters, it's, it's sons. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, it, the thing is, is that it, it doesn't define you. And people really, um, if they don't do their work and they don't get the help that they need, it can impact you in so many, so many ways. And I think having a conversation about molestation is transformational because you're a victim in essence that you didn't ask for this. This was taken from you, and now you get to survive and thrive from it. But what I find and I've heard in these stories and interviewing people is that People attack the person who was sexually assaulted, and that's not okay. And I just really yeah. want to thank you for your courage to come forward because there are so many people that are victims of sexual assault and that have sexual trauma in their life that this shows you what's possible. So thank you. You're very welcome. You know, I like to say it's, uh, abuse is the gift that keeps on giving. It It isn't a, whoo, I dealt with that one. And that's just about everything. I mean, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, I already dealt with that. Well, unfortunately, it is layer upon layer of of your evolution. And, and I believe if you don't evolve your story, you do not evolve your life, your success, your your experiences within relationships, your ability to love, the bandwidth that gives you your success motivator. But, but quite frankly, my motivation, and I, I laugh about this all the time, I'm so glad that I grew up angry. <laughs> like, if I didn't grow up angry and feisty, <laughs> I would be dead by now. I, I'm not kidding. I would walk into the no, I, I, and they would say I, I to me, you. they're like, they're like, my God, why aren't you dead? Why aren't you a crack whore? Why aren't you on the streets? And and truth be told, I was so angry. I would always get in fights. Not, I was like, I was great in school. I behaved, but behind, you know, when nobody was watching, I was the biggest troublemaker on the planet. And I'd get in fights in every sport I played. I was in a fight. And people, listeners, I'm about five for soaking wet. I mean, I am not a big gal, but I am mighty. Yeah, you're, I am... <laughs> yeah. you're scrappy. I would call Jane M. Powers I'm a, scrappy. <laughs> I'm a scrapper. But I bobbed and weaved yeah. through life. And, you know, so, I, I, I mean, the minute I popped out of the womb, uh, uh, my abuse started very, very young. Um, and I... 
you know, I don't know if this is a positive aspect of my healing. There is good and bad within my um, my experience of healing because I happen to be one individual that has just about every memory that one can take. And I believe that many survivors, many people that have gone through abuse of any sort, some have a dissociative style, not they have a disorder, but they're able to step out of their body, and that's how we don't remember. I didn't remember until I was in a domestic violent relationship. I was not the violator. I was a violatee. Um, You know, I was being knocked around, knocked out, you know, kicked, punched, whatever. And I thought, my God, this this is as good as it gets. And I was in college. I was a junior in college, and I thought, this is what life is. At least I'm not being raped every day. But... And it was wow. by a woman. It was it was a, a you know very sizable tall woman that was my partner at the time, and I put my fist through a dorm window, and when I did that, I stopped and said, you know what, I need to get some help, and I went into therapy. Now my mother had uh, been an alcoholic for my life, and I, I can't can you imagine why she saw what her husband, her, you yeah. know, the father of her children were doing. And my mother passed away when I was just, I just turned 14 and it, I was left to the wolves. And I remember thinking, you know what, mom, I could have saved you. I, I don't know why I thought I could, but I was only, I was a kid and I thought I could have saved you. I will never take that route. I will never take the course that my mother did or some of my siblings. I chose not to drink. I chose not to do drugs. I chose not to. Um, I did self-mutilate through sports. I, I mean, I would do certain right. things through sports that would, right. you know, put the physical pain on the outside so people can go, oh, man, that must hurt. And I'm like, <laughs> more than you can imagine. But it's, a you know, right. a subconscious and unconscious way of saying, somebody, please, see me, care for me, and love me. And and many times it's that silent scream, it's that silent misery that individuals who have been through this type of trauma, and again, sexual or any other kind, it becomes that silence that you live within your own. So this is interesting, right. Rob. So I went had my memories and started going through, uh, they did a family role play. I had no memories. Apparently my therapist was like, my God, in her mind, she's like, you are a poster child for a survivor of sexual abuse. And I thought, no, no, no. You know, I, I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind. And she did a family role play. So some of you have been in counseling. You basically are sitting as an audience member watching your family dynamic as you describe it. And she is doing that. Mm. And I'm physically, I am shaking. I am drenched. And I am in a full-on breakdown and went, oh, my God, I know exactly what happened to me. And I started going through various types of therapy, and I started having nightmares, and they were of wow. cats. And I'm a little, I was always a little afraid of cats. And I had cat, severed cat heads, sorry, audience, it's a little maybe graphic, in my pocket. And they just were a biting. Bit. So, just, just a little bit. Okay, so let's just try to, that is a dream. <laughs> That is a dream. Yeah, it's a dream. <laughs> it's not yeah. real. Jane does not carry around <laughs> severed cat heads no. in, in, in no. her pocket. It was a dream. Right. It was a dream. Yeah. But it was, but the, the cats were devouring my, you know, my danger zone, my private parts. And I started oh, having more and more. They went from cat experiences to full on memories. And I mean, I have, and, and it's interesting because. Then I thought, you know, I started drawing, I started writing, I started, and I decided I'm going to confront it because I've got a lot of nieces and nephews, and this cycle must must stop. And I came out with the truth. I confronted my father first, and he admitted and said, I apologize. And then after years, he was like, well, maybe I didn't. I'm like, okay, you can't. You can't retract. Like, right. 
It's not, right. you can't do that. Right. Um, you know, I had uh, my one brother, I never even confronted him, but he caught wind of it, you know, and continued to call me and threaten me. And he had, you know, many guns. Wow. And I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm out of here. And I went on the Oprah yeah. show. That's a brilliant way to keep the secret, just so you know. <laughs> Go on the Oprah Winfrey yeah. show. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many people watched the episode. I think maybe millions. I, I wasn't yeah. thinking. They, I thought, they might be Googling am, it right be. now. <laughs> okay, it was 1980-something people. And, and, and truly, I, once I did that, I couldn't keep the secret anymore. I thought, you know what? I don't care if you are afraid of your own shadow. Now, right. you can, there's no turning back. There's no turning back. So what I, in this book that I have written, there's no turning back. Despite the level of success I had, I still think missing that peace, both peace, peace and a peace of myself. And I began to explore what was the cornerstone of my breakthrough. And I am, I'm going to tell you, and I believe this, I will stand firm on this for the rest of my days on this planet and beyond. I believe if we do not admit to who we truly are and how we truly feel, desire, want, whatever it is, if we do not find our voice, we will continue to be a victim of our abuse and our circumstances in the past. I believe yeah. that is my heart and soul. Well, I was just going to jump back, and, and I think people that are listening, it's very fascinating because I – this is crazy. So I was molested when I was 11 and you're 12 years old. And mm-hmm. I discovered um, a long time ago that I went to counseling for it, and um, – somehow it land. And so I, I knew that I did it. I went to counseling for a while and I somehow got the notes from the therapist. It might've been to my parents or I don't know how I got the notes, but it was very detailed of what had happened. And mm-hmm. I put it away and life went on. I totally forgot that anything happened. My mind blocked mm-hmm. everything out, which is it, People don't understand that your mind doesn't want you to experience difficult times, and it will absolutely. And so that did not exist. Um, something triggered it, and all of a sudden it came back, and I'm like, this didn't happen. I'm crazy. And then it went on for a little bit of time, and then I came across those therapist reports, and I'm like, oh, my God. So, like, the power of your brain is pretty incredible to protect you. And just know you really need to believe people when they say, like, for example, I have another podcast, which is the Living the Law of Action show. And Kelly, 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 um, that's her name, uh, she was telling us about how she had a cocaine addiction and she went into the Betty Ford Clinic. And during that time, all of these memories of her being very violently sexual assaulted as a child came back and yeah. um, to the point is that, and I was like, Oh my God. And then other people knew about it. So you can have a memory loss where your brain just says, I don't want to deal with this anymore and yeah. know that. And I think that's really important. So I, I want to talk about how, if someone has gone through this, how do they grow beyond the edge of their comfort zone of what's happened to them? and find that missing piece spelled P-E-A-C-E. So there's a few stages. There are individuals. So, for example, I told you, I, I did not remember a thing, but there were triggers all over the place. I, there were, you yeah. know, I, I, I wasn't, I, I say this because I feel like I, you know, I have a dear, dear friend, Jay Fassett, he always says, my dear, you started seven miles behind the starting line. He's like, you, you had to come from behind in everything that you have done. 
And, and I feel like there's a number of different phases through our evolution of our story, evolution out of the, yeah. the rubbish that we grew up in. And I think the very first, and, and my dear love of my life, Denise, has gone through these, and I've experimented with the survive or method. That's our method trademark. Uh, it's the survive or method, <laughs> and I've so walked funny. her through this. <laughs> PM, Trademark. PM, little R with a circle, <laughs> patented. Okay. But here's here's the copyright, copyright, that, copyright. Don't anybody take it? Yes, sons of bit. Oh, no. Okay, we're on the air. Sorry, everybody. So here, she's, she's scrappy, she's that. feisty, but you gotta love her. <laughs> and and truly, it's a matter of do I have memories? Yes or no? It doesn't matter. If you believe, feel, and are have many traits where you go, you know what? Something happened. Validate yeah. that. But I'll tell you, Absolutely. I have ev- I have so many memories. It's ridiculous. I can remember. I described this to my family. They all all about like died when they're like, oh, Jane doesn't remember anything about you know. And they said, hey, tell us what you know what the house looked like in North Carolina. Well, I was two years old, two to three. I described it to a T, and my family went white. They were, they just, they sat there and went, because what they knew was that if I could remember that house, I could remember what happened to me. Once you give yourself permission, your body, your mind, your subconscious mind will begin to drip or flood your mind with memories. And that's what what my occurrence was. Yeah, like a a fire hose. I mean, so... In my existence, in my experience, like I can tell exactly what the person was wearing. I can tell you what the temperature was. I can tell you the room. I can tell you the texture. I can tell you beyond. I mean, the most, I don't know what it is about trauma, but you experience it in like surround sound, Dolby Atmos. I mean, just more than you really experience anything else. And I don't know what that's about, but when it comes at you like a fire hose, you remember every single detail. And some, some do not. And, and I, I just want to caution the listener. If you have been through trauma, your number one priority is you. Your number one priority yes. is don't run around and tell the world because the world is not real keen on saying, oh, you poor thing, oh, my goodness. I'm sure, I'm sh- well, look at your father. My dad was a very, he was a district manager. He was an engineer, top salesman, top at the country club, top at this, all these things. And people went, wow, that can't be true. How come nobody else right. is talking about it in the family? And, and so what I want you to, number one, you are the top priority of your healing. What I, I highly recommend Give yourself permission to allow signs, allow memories, allow visions, allow synchronicity to re- evolve your story for you. Meaning, if something triggers you, right, that's that, hey, whoa, I'm not feeling like myself, or something has got me small, uh, young, upset, angry, whatever it is, you got to take a look at it. So I am not a firm believer that we need to know every detail, why they, we never know why they did it. Well, I mean, I can, you know, give you all the reasons why I believe abusers abuse, but more importantly, we don't care why. We care more about, I'm going to give my past a kind glance. I'm not going to dive into it to re-evolve the story, or not re-evolve, but to re, re, you know, generate the story, the facts. At right. first, yes. At first, you do. Put them all down. Burn them. Like, get them out. Get the memories out. And if you do not have memories, do not abuse yourself again by denying it. I, I know right. for me, I had tons of memories. I'm like, man, have I got a great imagination. Wow, I'm creative. And you know what my father said to me one time? He goes, you know, you've got a great imagination. You're good at making things up. He was grooming me. He was grooming me not to tell the world the secret. And I'll tell you, I remember when I was, I can remember this clearly. I was a junior in high school. My mom obviously had since passed years ago. And I said to my father, "Thing is wrong with me. I think I'm going crazy. 
I, I need to see a psychiatrist. I must have seen it on TV, and I'm like, I need to see a psychiatrist. He said, no, you're good. You're fine. Well, he was smart. If I went in to see a therapist, they'd be like, what's going on? I'm like, well, I don't know if sexual abuse is a thing or not. Like, I would have been ratting out the whole family. And so if you have an inkling, if you have a suspicion that, you know what, something, something, to whatever degree has occurred, honor that and step through that process of, you know, putting it down, drawing it out, expressing it somehow, and then move into the next phase of what would I prefer? Do I want to be a victim to my circumstances, which now is a victim to your thinking? It's a victim to your thinking. And and that's we want to move beyond that by creating a new story of, Yes, if this happened, what I would prefer is this. And many people, many people, I have done it, used it as an excuse. I used to say, I, I, I had, I've had so many career um, adjustments. That's what Just I call them up. Just a few. Just a few. <laughs> I had both. And I would sit there, and I'm telling you, I was frustrated. I'd go home, and I'm like, well, if you had a childhood like mine, you too would experience this. You, too, would be behind, you know, the eight ball. You, too. Right. And I thought, I cannot be that person from the past. I must be someone that says, you know what, I'm going to take this, and I am going to move beyond the edge, the comfort zone. My comfort zone was I am the daughter of an abuser and, a, and the sister of abusers. That, that was my identity. Mama, I was a motherless daughter, and that was my identity. And I didn't realize that that was the one thing, the story, that was keeping me behind the starting line. And until wow. I started to, and people, if you learn anything from this time together, tell the truth and tell the truth quickly. Make your yes be yes, your no be no. And you design and desire whatever you choose, but you cannot do it without evolving that story. You can't just say, oh, yeah, that happened. I'm going to close it in a cabinet. It, it won't stay. What you right. resist, what you, it's like holding a giant beach ball under the water. It's coming up, people. It'll come up at the most inopportune time, the most inopportune yeah. time. And this is, this is men and women. I've, I used to do a lot of prevention work for sexual abuse prevention. We had a six foot three police officer built like a shit brick house, and he had been raped. He had been gang raped yeah. in an alley, and that that is just as vulnerable as a small kid. It's a, Absolutely, it sends the same message. Absolutely, absolutely. Well. Whew. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. We're just we're just getting warmed up. We're just getting warmed up, buddy. Well, <laughs> all right. So your book, Moving Beyond the Edge, with Jane M. Powers, your second book actually, um, comes out. It's in revealing May. the missing piece. Revealing the missing piece is the book. Oh, sorry. Okay, we'll see. I have to talk to the PR people. They messed up. So it's going to be coming out in May. <laughs> Tell me the title again. Revealing the missing piece. P E A C E. Love it. Love it. All right. Jane, you're amazing. <laughs> I'm here. I love you. You're so cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So how does one reach you if they would like to inquire more about your books, your coaching, just to connect and maybe you can offer some assistance of where you can direct them for their sexual trauma. Um, how would they reach mm-hmm. you? So the best, I think, one-stop shop, go to janempowers.com. You go to janempowers.com. I've got my events. I've got my book. Um, Revealing the Missing Peace page will be up very soon. But truth be told, I am, I am always happy to connect with individuals. My email is jane at janem, as in marypowers.com. 
And, you know, my main focus in this lifetime is to help people speak up and truly stand in their power and, and serve at a higher level. It doesn't matter if you have your own business or you are working at a corporation or organization, the key is that you must, you must stand in your own power. You must be able to set limits and boundaries, state your preferences, and make, again, going back to make your yes be yes, your no be no, that's the very first start, and then you move into what's my comfort zone. Give your past a kind glance, and then move into a new way of walking in the world. Never play victim to your past. You're not what happened to you, and you are not what was said about you. You're just not. You're more than that. Absolutely. Thank you, Jane M. Powers, for being here on Life Transformation Radio. When you reach out to Jane, please let her know you listen to this episode of Life Transformation Radio. Everyone listening, thank you so much for your support and taking the time out of your busy and precious day to listen to us. We so, so appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me, along with our guest, Jane, to touch your heart, move your soul, and inspire you to live a life of transformation. Until next time. This is Life Transformation Radio. Download complete.